It is. What's the uh, difference between them? Just the aroma, or is it? It's it's a little softer and sweeter, uh, finer odor, I think. What we try to do is first look at things organoleptically. It can include anything from just smelling on a strip to even tasting the oil. We would look at the color, as you stated, um, how it dries down, how it smells as it dries down. When you're evaluating these things organoleptically, you're, you're smelling a collection of chemicals. And unless you've smelled the individual components in their pure form, you can't really say, oh, this is too high in this or too low in that, unless you have the frame of reference to be able to compare the individual notes. And that's really the first stage of determining whether it warrants even going further with the GCMS analysis. So what we have here is uh, one of the latest um, uh, GCMS models from Shimatsu. It's a Japanese company that's come uh, along recently as one of the preferred equipment makers for this type of analysis. You put in the sample name, the type, uh, the method you're going to use, and once you have all this information in the computer, you load the samples into this auto sampler. What you'll see here is a line that's going to slowly draw out. This is a graph of, of intensity of the peak versus time, time on the x-axis. As you can see, this run is going to go out to 105 minutes. If you look at the uh, average GC run from, a, say, a, a general testing laboratory who might do a GC for somebody who doesn't specialize in essential oils, you might see a run that's maybe 30 minutes long. To do that short of a run, you're going to miss things. We stretch our runs out uh, up to 140 minutes, and not everything has to be run that long, but the minimum time I'm going to run something is going to be around 90 minutes. Essential oils are such complex mixtures of many different components. If you try to cram all that into a short time space, a lot of times you're going to get a lot of co-elution, two, two or more peaks coming off at the same time. And then you really don't know how much of each peak is there, or even you're not going to be able to identify the peak properly because you've got a mixture now of mass specs that are coming off at the same time. How the molecule fragments when it's subject to an electron beam and just shatters the molecule. And that fragmentation pattern is what allows us to identify it. But we can only identify it if we have a library that already has that fragmentation pattern in it. So this is where the library is the greatest tool of the analyst. You're only as good as your library. The commercial libraries only take you so far, so we're building our own private library of components. You know, it used to be enough to just look at things with a straight GC, you know, back in the old days, and eventually, as synthetic uh, uh, processes advanced, then it became necessary to you know, add an, a mass spec to that. And then, as time progressed later, synthetic techniques advanced even further where you could make the individual components synthetically and the mass spec is even identifying the synthetic and the natural the same. So then comes along the chiral chemical analysis which you, you can do as a chiral column now to separate out the L and D forms of an individual molecule and, and that's where everything is, is currently going.